o'clock, I'll call the meeting to war. Would you all rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. This evening's meeting is being broadcast live and recorded by McCann and is also being recorded by Verizon. Um, with that, we'll uh, start with the first item on the agenda, which is unanticipated. Does any board member have anything under unanticipated? Yes. Mr. McKinnon. Uh, Charlie, can we get a, uh, an update on the Valley Road? There was some... Uh, Drainage issues down there, or a drainage easement? Yeah, there's issue? a there's an easement that is being worked out with the um, the Martinsons, you know, uh, in conjunction with a, I guess another house they want to build up there, and uh, Andy's been working with them. Uh, I think it's just a matter of getting um, those issues sorted out so mm -hmm. that um, you know the easement can be constructed and and, and function. So, what about the road? The road is. I understand the road's in deteriorated condition. Um, yeah, it is. It is, is. We've been patching it, and, um, you know, it's like all, a lot of our other roads, unfortunately. Okay. But, but Andy has been working with them and with their engineer to, um, you know, to work through it and okay. so we can move forward. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone in the audience have anything under unanticipated? Announcements and recognition. Uh, I have one. The Braga family asked me to, to thank uh, members of the town who, uh, who made uh, this weekend a little easier for them. Uh, one was uh, the, our secretary and, and the town manager's um, assistant, uh, Caroline and Jackie, um, for getting making the hall available and expediting the liquor license. Uh, that was a big help and something they didn't have to worry about. They also wanted me to thank the uh, local police department who, uh, who provided um, support during the lengthy procession uh, for, for Jim this weekend um, and for the fact that they, uh, they treated Jim's body with respect after the accident and remained with him until the medical examiner picked him up. So uh, they wanted me to, uh, to express their thanks to all the community for their support during this trying time. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Brannigan and the uh, student council who came down after the luncheon and cleaned up the hall for us. So uh, they wanted me to express their thanks. Anyone else? Mr. Frump. I just want to say thank you to the uh, Millborough Lakeville Herring Commission. Those guys went down uh, on Sunday afternoon and uh, jumped right into the river with chainsaws and ropes and pulleys. and. Uh, they had one of the, tr the trees that had fallen down during the storms and was uh, just below the dam. So it was uh, cold work, but it was a lot of fun if you like that type of thing, and I do. But uh, they, got the j they went down there Chris. on their own without anybody asking them and just did what they, was, what they thought was best for the, the herring run. And, uh, and they do that all the time. It's, they're really an unsung commission. They're down there during the herring run all day, you know, keeping an eye on the fish, telling everybody who's down there all the information about it, and uh, I just really wanted to say thanks to them because they really do a great job for all of it. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone in the audience? Uh, with that, I need a, uh, I'd entertain a motion from the board to authorize the chair of his designee to sign all the necessary warrants this week. So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Uh, minutes. Approval of the minutes. Um, the regular minutes uh, for March 11th. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? One. One abstentions, three in favor. And the executive session minutes for March 11th. Motion to approve. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions, one. Three to one. Moving down to uh, new business. First item is vote to open the annual town meeting warrant to add an article and close the warrant, Ray, the PS trustees. Uh, so first one is a motion to open the annual town meeting warrant. Motion to open the town meeting warrant. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Um, the, uh, we have a letter here from um, Donald Atkins, a member of the Board of Trustees. I am writing on behalf of the PS Trustees to request that you place the following article on the warrant for the annual town meeting. We realize it is late in the warrant process, but the probate court only notified the trust this past week that it had acted favorably on the nomination. This is the language that has traditionally been used for this purpose. To see if the town will vote to assent to the appointment of Robert M. DeRoches as trustee under the will of Thomas S. Pierce for the benefit of the public library of the town of Middleborough and as a trustee under the will of Thomas S. Pierce for the benefit of the town of Middleborough without furnishing a surety or sureties on his official bond as trustee under wither of said trust. So that's, uh, that's the article they'd like to add. Motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Hearing Mr. DeRosa here, Mr. would you like to address this? It's what? Mr. DeRosa here, would you like to address this in any way, shape, or form? Unless you have a question, no, I'm all set. Okay. He's all set. Thank you, I didn't see you back there. Uh, with that, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, all those opposed? Ayes have it, it's unanimous. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Motion to close the warrant. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the warrant. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Aye. all those opposed? Ayes have it, it's unanimous, the warrant is now closed. Next item is vote to issue a one-day all-alcohol beverage liquor license for the bartender and services of New England retroactive to March 16th, 2013 from 1 to 6 p.m. at the town hall. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just so that everyone knows, this was the one-day liquor license for the <coughs> luncheon that was held here, sadly, for the Braga funeral. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Next item is vote to approve the new access path named Reedy Path in place of Reedy Way. Um, the reason for this is um, <clears throat> When we're talking about a, um, a private way uh, of this kind, uh, we didn't want to give anybody the impression that it might now or ever in the future be a public way, and the use of the term path is a clear indication that these are private. So this is going to be called Reedy Path? Reedy Path. That's a pleasure yeah. of the board. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve, and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I certainly wouldn't like to have them sitting here 200 years from now saying, damn it, oh. if they ever can oh. figure oh. out oh. Oh. Street, maybe we can work on this path thing. <laughs> <laughs> Next item <laughs> is vote to reappoint Constant Connie Miller to the Agricultural Commission for a three-year term expiring June 13, 2016. We have a letter from Connie Miller expressing uh, her desire to serve on the commission. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Unanimous. Next item. Uh, this is a carryover from a discussion we had a couple of weeks ago. 
is vote to support letter to the town's legislation delegation on infrastructure funding. Um, just to kind of refresh everybody's memory, uh, the, uh, the, the state uh, house is going to uh, propose a bill to come up with a dedicated revenue source to support infrastructure maintenance, roads and bridges uh, throughout the state. Um, the need is there. MMA, MMA supports this in terms of increasing the Chapter 90 funding. Chapter 90 funding is used by local communities to maintain our local roads. Um, basically, that is the only source of funding to maintain our local roads. Um, so, um, our town manager has drafted a letter based on the comments the previous week. You have, I will read this letter so that everyone who doesn't have a copy will understand what this letter is saying. Uh, it's uh, being uh, directed to state, uh, to Senator Pacheco, Representative Coulter, Gifford, and Oral, and the letter reads as follows. The Board of Selectmen asks that you support a limited revenue package dedicated exclusively to maintain and repair our current transportation infrastructure. Like many municipalities, the town of Middleborough relies entirely on Chapter 90 funds to repair its local roads. The current Chapter 90 funding levels are insufficient to keep up with the repair of 174 miles of roads. Many of our roads are in deplorable condition. The proposal to increase Chapter 90 funding to $300 million would add more than $800,000 to our road budget and allow us to immediately improve a number of important local roads. As you know, we have long advocated for improvements to the Middleborough Rotary and the widening of Route 44 from Carver to the Rotary. While these projects are extremely important to the economic development of the town and the entire region, we are also aware that they are very expensive. TIP funding alone will not be sufficient to finance these important projects. Our support for any additional revenue source to maintain and improve our existing transportation infrastructure is with the understanding that this new revenue be dedicated solely for that purpose and that the Middleborough Rotary improvements designed by Mc, McMahon, McKinnon, Mc, McMahon, thank you and associates will be funded within the next five years. Thank you for your continued advocacy on our behalf, sincerely signed by the Board of Select. So I think this letter incorporates all of the issues that were of concern to some members of this board in terms of indicating that it be dedicated solely for the purposes of infrastructure improvement, that, it, uh, that the Rotary Project be be on the list for this funding within the five-year time frame. Um, Mr. Chair. So I'll turn this, I will ask for comments from the board regarding this. Motion to approve. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'm going to second this again, as I did previously, open it up for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Mr. Fowler. Mr. Fowler. From all accounts, this revenue package is going to go through. It's supported by the speaker. It's supported by a number of different state reps that I've spoken to already. It's supported by the MMA. There's no point in voting against this. It doesn't help us in any way, shape, or form. It only hurts us. It's going to go through. We might as well be on the winning side of it. It can only help us. I've spent countless hours advocating for a rotary a solution to the rotary. And time and time again, I'm told that there's, there's no money for it. And I understand that. We all know that there is money for it, we're just not on the list yet. Voting against transportation funding isn't gonna get us on the list. I'm sure that, I can't guarantee that it is gonna get us on the list, but I'll guarantee you that if we vote against transportation funding, we're gonna get exactly what we voted for. We're going to get the tax increase, and we're not going to get a dime of it. I don't see any point. And if you want to stand on principle, that's great. I don't think Middleborough can afford to stand on principle on this any longer. That's just my opinion. Anyone else like to comment on this? Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKinnon. Um, the 
rotary design by McMahon and Associates, that was our plan? Yeah, that's our plan. That's our okay. plan. That's the one that the state doesn't want to do. Well, that's the one we haven't convinced them to do yet, but hopefully we will. So that's the one the state doesn't want to do. Well, remember. They said no. Well, remember, it's only one person that's the one who said no. I, I haven't heard this from anybody else in SDOT. In fact, you know, um, I've heard unofficially that there's a fair amount of support within MassDOT for this design, although no one's going to go on the record at this point. Well, here's my problem. I mean, we're asking to go, we're asking the taxpayers to take yet another hit for an unknown amount of money because the, no, there is no bill stated yet. So we're asking to allow our legislators to raise our taxes to an un unknown amount, for an unknown, unknown amount, with the hopes that somebody will go on record as saying that the, our plan is a good plan and the hopes that they will eventually put this on the tip so that we can move it forward. I, I don't think there's 37 million, well, I don't know. There might be $37 million laying around that, that the state is wasting right now. Uh, the state has increased its salaries. Uh, the number of people on the payroll from since 2004, the state's spent a million dollars more in, in office equipment last year than they did the previous year. They went ahead and bought a couple of hundred chairs and there's a hundred of them sitting in a room not being used. It's nice that they bought the chairs, but that's taxpayer money that's being wasted. There's a guy, I mean, there's a guy that's getting a, 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 a pension for $343,000 a year. That's his pension. I'm, I'm pretty certain that they waste a whole lot of money up there. And we're going to give them more? Yeah, on principle, I say no. I say no to more taxes. Let us use that money that they've got more efficiently and effectively. They've taken a lot of that tip money, the, the, the gas tax money that people pay, and they're using it to support the MBTA. And that's the money that should be going for the infrastructure not for the MBTA. When they incorporated MBTA into Mass DOT, that was the plan. So they could have a bunch of money to, to pour into the MBTA. That's not helping these folks out here that have to drive around. And that's not helping our roads. So I say no to this. Unfortunately, I can't support this. It's, they're taking our money, and we're not going to see anything for it anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKinnon. Anyone else? Well, I'm going to speak in favor of supporting this letter um, for some of the reasons that uh, Mr. Frawley indicated. Uh, we've been trying for years to get this rotary completed. Um, and one of the issues that always pops up is even if we have an approved plan, there is no funding source for the project. Um, I think this letter states our position very clearly that we're only supporting this if the Rotary project is on the list to be, to be funded within the next five years. We also have another crack at this. If the, if the actual bill that comes out doesn't suit uh, our needs or the wording that we suggested, we can always send our, another letter in saying we don't agree with this proposed bill for those reasons. I'll also in indicate to you that the MMA supports this bill, which is a very conservative organization and doesn't generally support increased taxes of any kind. However, they are supporting this because of the need. Our infrastructure is falling apart in Massachusetts. If we don't address it, so goes business development. They'll go elsewhere. They'll go to other states. Um, we need to address it. And I agree. There's probably lots of waste at the state level. Uh, but this infrastructure can't wait 
until they sort out that waste and decide to cut it. I mean, they haven't done it in in a hundred years. What makes you th what makes us think they're going to do it in time to repair to do the work that's required to repair our roads and bridges before someone gets hurt or it just stops commercial development in our area altogether. So, for those reasons, I'm in support of this letter, Mr. Tim, Mr. Spataro. I contacted. I'll, I'll get you. I contacted uh, Representative Arroyo's office today, and while she was not in, I did talk with her aide. Uh, they reached out to uh, find out where we were on the list, and while uh, they did not get an answer from Transportation, they did get an answer from Surfed, which says we're four, number four out of 24 projects. So, I mean, if there's any funding or anything, it should come. They also contacted uh, uh, the Transportation Department and, and asked point blank to one of the assistants. Uh, uh, Secretary said uh, that uh, would a decision like this be political? Like if we were not supporting the tax that we would not get our fair share? And they said absolutely not. And, and you believe that? Huh? I don't believe um, that. I don't I, believe that for one minute, but that's okay. Uh, I, mean, that, I, I, I appreciate the input. I, 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 I did it. I reached out to uh, uh, um, Rep Representative uh, Gifford's office. I did not get a return call, but her track record is not to vote against uh, her leadership, which is not in support of additional taxes. I mean, we have to vote for the town, but if our uh, delegation is against it and we're for it, uh, that sends a mixed message as well. So, uh, you know what, again, uh, I'm repeating myself from two weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Healy, uh, town manager, a couple before Charlie, uh, did an analysis and showed us that they're paying capital uh, operating expenses out of the capital budget. They continue to do that. So if they didn't get the money, would they let the infrastructure fall apart and hurt the citizens, or would they finally address the fact that they're spending a capital budget for operating expenses? I mean, clearly, just like the federal government is doing, if they don't get their way, they're going to put the pain on the citizens. But I would hope that uh, <coughs> the people in Boston would finally realize that you can't uh, spend operate, uh, capital money on operating expenses and address the operating expense versus what uh, bridges fall down. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Crowley. I'm not in favor of raising taxes. But the opportunity to get a solution to the rotary problem presents an opportunity to increase our economic development in Middleborough, which will help our tax base. That's the end game for this, is to improve our tax base with, by working on our economic development areas. And that's one of our main areas that we cannot develop because we can't get the rotary fixed. If we can make the rotary a lot more palatable to businesses to come in here, we have an opportunity to add to our, our tax base, create some economic development, and maybe not pass this, these increased taxes onto our, our citizenship on a yearly basis as things continue to, to get worse and worse. Let's build a, a better buffer zone with the commercial revenue. It's not going to happen unless we get that road. I don't understand why we wouldn't support this. I mean, can we all agree that it's going to go through? I mean, does anybody honestly think that this is not going to go through? Because if you think it's going to go through and you vote against it, you're just shooting us in the foot. Thank you. Judy. Um, I just want to say, I, I need a little, so Judy Bigelow Costa. Thank you. Tinkham. Uh, um, first off, I need a little bit of clarity because I was sitting over there and I couldn't hear the letter. Okay, so I just need a little bit of clarity on understanding. You are discussing taxes being raised. Um, at the state level. At the state level, correct? Yes. And. Is this because you want funding for the Rotary? We want funding for all of our infrastructure, but including the Rotary. If this bill passes, uh, they will increase Chapter 90 money uh, by $300 million a year for the entire state. That means $800,000 more a year for the town of Middleborough, mm -hmm. which will help us maintain more of our local roads in better shape than they are now. Okay. Do you feel as though by doing this letter, that is going to help our town at all in respect to 
what information we can get from Boston in the state level as far as infrastructure for us, or should we in fact be waiting for a new administration? Well, personally I wouldn't vote for this if I didn't think it would help us locally. So I'm supporting this because I believe it will help us locally now uh, as opposed to waiting. So that's, that's why I'm supporting this. I'll let the other board members speak for themselves, so, but for me, if I didn't think it would help us locally, I wouldn't support it. I'm not a big fan of raising taxes either. But uh, these projects are expensive. Our infrastructure is falling apart. Uh, and the state, for whatever reason, is not directing revenue toward this need. This bill, if passed, is a dedicated revenue source that can only be used for infrastructure improvements. Okay. Will there be a guarantee in it if it passes that well, middle bow will get a help get help? Well, th there is no guarantee what the final bill will look like. We we indicated in our letter that I just read that we our support is predicated on the fact that the rotary will be funded within the next five years. Uh, so we're expressing that in our support. If the bill doesn't, there is no draft of the bill out yet. This is purely a proposal in someone's head and they're talking about it, but there's no bill on the floor yet or haven't, hasn't even been drafted. So if that bill comes out and it doesn't indicate what we've indicated here, then, then we've got another bite at the apple. And we could say we don't support the bill as drafted. If we were but, to go... But as Mr. Frawley said, um, and, and, and some people view this as being blackmailed, we're being blackmailed here if we don't support this, bill and it's going to pass anyway, uh, my feeling is that it will pass um, and, we, and we stand opposed to it that it doesn't put the town of Middleborough in very good light when they determine the priorities of projects to be funded. In all honesty, I don't think we stand in very good light right now anyways. Mr. And I hmm. feel as though we might be shooting ourselves in the foot, but that's only my opinion. I, and, and I guess I would just respond that since for the last four years since I've been involved in this rotary project, they've always said, the people we've talked to, is even if we get a plan, there's no funding for the project. So somehow we've got to come up with a revenue source. And I think this is a possibility. Uh, and it's in its early stages, uh, why, why not support it and see where it goes? I mean, they have done this before. They've done it for the schools, mm -hmm. the school trust fund. It's a dedicated fund to help build new schools, and they've done that. They've shown that they have the discipline to do that um, in the past. Hopefully, they'll have the will to, uh, to stand up to what they say in this bill as well and be disciplined enough to keep their hands off it except for infrastructure improvements, roads and bridges. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. I think it's important to remember this is, there's two parts to this. Another $800,000 to our Chapter 90 funding. I get emails from constituents all the time who ask me to drive down the road that they're talking about. And luckily, I drive a four-wheel drive Jeep because some of these roads are impassable, especially this one, to without one. So, I mean, this is... Yeah, There's a lot of money coming into Middleborough for our Chapter 90. Well, I don't, I don't know why we wouldn't support that. Yeah, that that's pretty much guaranteed. We, I, mean, and I don't know if there's another town that has 174 miles of roads. So I don't, I don't think that there's another town that this could be more important to. Everybody knows that Plymouth's bigger, but Miles Standish has got all that, and those aren't public roads. So if there's another town that has more public roads that they have to take care of the Middleborough, I'm unaware of it. But I, we could certainly use some help in fixing up our roads. And if you don't believe me, drive down Cedar Street. Or well, Precinct Street. Go or, yeah. Just go down Station Street. Go down Route 28. Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKinnon. Yes. Um, look, we're asking To, we, we're given them permission to, to, to raise taxes and they don't even, there's no, there's no number that they're giving us to say, well, this is the tax amount we're looking for. I think what they're asking us for is the support to create 
a dedicated source of revenue for infrastructure improvements. When the final bill is drafted, we'll know what that number is and what the revenue source will be, whether it be gasoline tax, sales tax. They, they haven't, and, and at that point, we can again express our support or non-support of the item. But I think what they're asking us for now is for support of the concept. Are we willing to listen to a proposal for a dedicated revenue source for our infrastructure? And that's what this letter says is, yeah, we're willing to listen. No, we're willing that, that, to support. Support. This says we're willing to support. To support we're, we're willing revenue to support source. what? There's no number. I mean, we're supporting Charlie mentioned last week, support. Charlie I'm mentioned two weeks ago, it was $600 million. Was that your, the magic number? That, that's what was being discussed at a, um, uh, at a legislative breakfast that I attended. Uh, Which is what they bring in now. Hmm? What they bring in now for tax money for fuel tax. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that's right. So they're going to, we're, what, they're, what they're looking at is doubling fuel tax money. If, if that's so we'll what go they, from, go from yeah. what, 37 cents a gallon to 74 cents a gallon? Tax? Well, we're not talking, nobody said it's a gas tax either. You, you can't say we don't have a number, but we know it's going to be a gas tax. If it's ambiguous, then it's ambiguous, but it can't be specific when you want it. And then non-specific when you don't. Well, I want to. I want to. I would like more specifics than just raise my taxes. What? We're supporting the idea of a dedicated revenue fund. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Spataro, I'd make a motion to amend. You already have a motion. Okay. So you. Okay. you want to amend it? What do you want to amend it, to not support? No, no, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd amend to table it until we have uh, the specific bill. Sure, go ahead. And I'd ask for a second on that. Second. Obviously, it's not going to pass in the current form, and you don't want to, you don't want to take a vote that fails. So why don't we wait and see what the specific bill is, and hopefully we'll have time to, to act on it before, you know, it, it's already passed. That would be my recommendation. And we have a motion. Do we get a second to table? Yes. I did. All those in favor to table? Aye. 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 We got three. All those in favor? I didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for it. So you got three in favor. All those against? Aye. Aye. Three to two, it's tabled until um, whenever. No, okay. not, not to whenever, until there's a bill that's uh, on which we know specific. Okay, moving down to the next agenda items. Dan Badger here. Come on down, Dan. Uh, Ray Community Service, and he's going to give us a little uh, update on the Namaska River with a stewardship project. Welcome, Dan. Um, since I am a new face to some of you, I took the liberty of making some copies of some information about me and about the project for your review for later as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan Badger. I am the director of Badger Wilderness Guides. We are a nonprofit uh, outdoor education and recreational therapy service. Um, Purpose for, uh, uh, by the way, I wanted to thank, thank you for uh, uh, giving me some time to talk about this uh, project, which is the Namaska River Stewardship Project. Uh, our goal is to, one, um, and I'll explain uh, the, the uh, 
techniques for what we plan on doing, but what we'd like to do is play a part in cleaning up the river uh, for the purposes of making it a safer place for uh, recreational use. And um, also to provide uh, leave no trace training as a gift to the community. Um, the funding for this project, um, I always uh, like, like people to know I am not here to ask for money. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I am here to, uh, I am here, however, to ask for uh, community involvement um, as uh, I believe community uh, uh, service, environmental stewardship is a, is a uh, should be a, an inclusive activity. Um, real quick, uh, we have already in place um, grant funding um, for some of this through um, uh, through uh, a couple local banks, uh, the American Canoe Association, and uh, we will be getting more um, more support from some local organizations. Um, a couple that I are confirmed will be um, organizations like Leave No Trace themselves. Uh, LeaveNoTrace.org is um, in my notations there, so you, I encourage you to read up on uh, the benefits of being associated with them. Um, I am, I have in the past uh, saw guidance and will continue to seek guidance from uh, the town's conservation committee uh, who has uh, promised a uh, letter of support uh, for this project uh, after reviewing um, the, the concept uh, last year. And um, I will be also seeking guidance um, for techniques so as to uh, not disturb local wildlife certainly not local residents, and, um, and to make this as effective and non-impact as possible. Um, so we will be uh, seeking guidance from the, the state DEP, uh, the local EPA, uh, excuse me, the federal EPA, who I've had some um, uh, connections with in grant writing, and, um, and of course, the, the, town, the town of Millboro itself. So, um, the, other, uh, the other portion of this, in terms of support, uh, which may come up in terms of liability issues um, and the like. Um, I will have um, all, all leaders from this program will be um, certified EMTs or paramedics or above. And um, in terms of uh, pod leaders, um, I know amongst you there is a, a uh, uh, main guide. Uh, I am a fellow main guide as well uh, in the rafting in, in the rafting industry. And um, I can tell you uh, we're going to have the same format as this and just in brief uh, to explain. We'll have a trip leader in the front. We have a medical leader in the rear of um, three to five um, groups of canoes. Um, we want to make this also a family friendly um, event and, um, and not a, a one weekend event. I'd like to stagger this uh, for three, three to four different uh, days throughout the summer between Memorial and Labor Day and uh, so as to be able to include as many people who want to get involved in, in the community as possible. We have a donation of up to 100 life, uh, life preservers, both uh, children friendly and uh, adult life preservers for anybody participating. And uh, we will take up to uh, 10 canoes at a, 10 to 12 canoes at a time uh, based on the uh, trip leader support that I have in place now. And, um, and we will also be uh, supplying radio communication equipment between the trip leaders and the like. Um, my gift, Badger Wilderness Guide's gift to the community is to ultimately um, be able to train uh, at least five and up to 10 uh, leave no trace instructors um, so that they will be able to um, eventually once, this, uh, once the project leaves the nest as it were, um, you'll have Community, uh, community folks that are interested in keeping the Namaskit um, as beautiful as it can be and be able to continue training um, more volunteers. Um, and I, I will always, uh, my organization will stay involved at the comfort level of the community uh, for consultation and continue uh, education uh, in this effort. All right. Thank you. It sounds like a worthwhile project. When do you intend to start? Um, about this time last year. About this time last year. <laughs> so, you're, so you've already started this, or you well, I've I've done some I've done some scouting of the river. Um, I've identified three three targeted areas, um, just to, 
just to break it down and so that it's, it's nothing I think that's gonna happen in one year. And that's a good problem in that uh, we, we leave things open to bail to kick off next year, maybe even earlier. Um, in terms of the grant support, um, I already have some funding that I got last year for the American Canoe Association um, because we were trans, uh, transitioning into trying to become a nonprofit um, for a lot of other ventures that are, that are happening. Um, I held off and just had a bunch of friends do some paddling with me and we just literally picked up some garbage on the, on the riverbanks and, um, and that helped us target um, the areas that we want to look at this year. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKinnon. Oh, Mr. Spatel. Uh, is, so this would be picking up trash that's in the river uh, uh, itself. Yes. There's no requirement, like, uh, there's no requirement for, you're not taking any wild rice or anything else? Any, uh, any. Wild rice or anything else? No, certainly not. Um, and, and, and I've actually sat in on a couple meetings with the DEP, um, with the, with the conservation, with the town's conservation committee. And we talked a little bit about, uh, issues of actually pulling, pulling up, um, any vegetation, uh, so as to release seeds and things like that that you don't want further down the river. Um, and so we'll actually, before people even set foot on the, um, at, in terms of wanting to help, um, they're going to be um, uh, taught how to go about taking garbage. What things, uh, we're probably going to be talking more about what not to do than what to do um, in terms of um, things that we definitely won't be doing. We won't be doing tree removal. Uh, we won't be, there'll be a limit to the size of objects that we'll remove. Um, because those objects may be further down into the ground and um, they're uh, having directed uh, a few uh, uh, river stewardship projects in the past, especially up in Maine. Um, I can tell you that there's uh, a limit as to um, what you can have um, pulled out size-wise, um, but also in terms of first things, first thing is the safety of the volunteers. Uh, we don't want canoes tipping over and, and, uh, and so forth. So. Um, the initial, the initial goal for this first year is to do an initial sweep down um, top to bottom to see what we can get. And um, if the door is open for other days, we have more volunteers. Um, I have 11, I have eight confirmed volunteers from my staff. I have an apprenticeship uh, program I require from my guides that I, I staff out um, for guide services up north and out west. And one of their requirements to be in a past my apprenticeship program is to either do a river or a trail stewardship project. So I volunteered them for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I, Dan was uh, sent to me about two years ago, and I have worked professionally with him in the last two years. And I can honestly tell you that he follows through with whatever he starts. And um, when this program goes forward, it's very similar to the mess movers, only it's the water. And Dan has a very extensive background in water and water quality. And I can honestly tell you that we could not ask for anything better or anyone better to help us try to clean up the riverway and just do the best we can with what we have, little funding. And so I highly suggest that we take up, take them up on the offer. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chair? Mr. McKinnon. Somebody wants to volunteer. Uh, I know Alan, I'm asking this for Alan because I know he wants to jump in the river, but um, how, how do they just contact Badger Wilderness Guides, Inc.? That's it, or is there a website? Or? There is, I, um, I passed out my business card on there. I wanted to have just general information okay. uh, for that. Um, one of the reasons for not having my, um, my letterhead actually on these documents is um, I would appreciate your imprint on, um, on the uh, Namaskit page, thoughts, concerns, anything like that. Uh, because in the end, again, um, this project will be your project if you want it. And so, um, it being being that this is the genesis of all this, I would, um, I I I don't I don't just say that I'm all about inclusion. I really am, um, sometimes to a fault, and uh, so I'm also okay with people telling me to to uh, 
maybe back off a little bit or maybe um, we need assistance in this area or that area. Um, in terms of the types of volunteers, um, everybody from on the river people to um, we'll need um, support in terms of um, we're going to have a, a thank you cookout at the end of the season as well. So uh, um, like me, if you bake pies and things like that, those are welcome as well. So um, that'll, as this uh, project matures a bit, uh, that, that information will be forthcoming. Sign me up, Dan. All right. Don't lose that. Have I already signed you up. I didn't All know right. yet. <laughs> uh, you might want to go in front of the Lakeville Board of Selectmen, see what they say, because yep. it is, it's a shared border. Yep. Uh, I'd be more than happy to go with you whenever you want to do that. Um, I have a canoe you can use. I have life jackets you can use. I have trash bags you can use. I'll do whatever I can to help make this project move forward. Uh, so you have my number. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Dan. Thank right. you for coming. All right, Mr. Thank Chairman. you very much. And I Mrs. have Mr. Can I make a motion that we support this activity? I go right ahead. That's a motion. <laughs> motion. Do I have a second? second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. We have our support. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda is we have our annual report from the Seoul Homestead, presented by Frank Albany. Frank, thank you. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Yes, is this the celebrity Frank? Yeah. The one that was on TV yesterday and did a wonderful job oh. at the uh, Rotary Auction along <laughs> with uh, everybody else that uh, raised money? I think it might be one of the same. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, the Rotary Auction's a lot of fun, and uh, as you all know, they do some great work in town, so I'm happy to help. Uh, again, my name is Frank Albany. I'm the director of Seoul Homestead Education Center. And as previously stated, I'm here to uh, give the selectmen my annual report. Uh, I sent some documents in that you, I hope you have uh, to refer to if you want to. I'm going to start with the farm plan, uh, talk briefly about uh, the expansion project that we have going, just review some financial basics up on the screen here. And then I'm going to introduce our uh, education director, Laurie Amberman, to talk for a few minutes about children's programs. Uh, then I'll run through uh, the uh, program summary, which is just a general outline of everything we do at Seoul Homestead Education Center. And then I'll finish up with this sheet uh, titled Volunteer Hours that shows uh, how much volunteer participation uh, really uh, makes the Seoul Homestead run. So uh, I'm going to sit down at the computer and just uh, kind of address the board as I go through the slides. And uh, if anyone has any questions, just, you know, pipe right up and I'll try okay. to answer them as best Thank you. So on the sheet entitled Farm Plan, uh, the first item uh, is the easternmost fields along Seoul Street, approximately 10 acres, are rented to this gentleman, who, uh, Rich Siemens, who's been a fixture at Seoul Homestead as long as I have, which is about 17 or 18 years now. And uh, this is a picture from last year's Sheep Day where uh, Rich was doing a sheepdog demonstration. He's a wonderful tenant, uh, uh, very generous with his equipment and his time, and uh, it's wonderful to have him there. Uh, I came to Seoul Homestead, like I say, about 17, 18 years ago uh, to do some organic farming. And this is one of my fields. This is an old photo, uh, maybe even 10 years old now. I rent, and I still rent, five acres in the back uh, field uh, to do farming. Uh, all the staff at Seoul Homestead is uh, part-time. I'm paid to work three days a week for uh, the education center, and the rest of the time I'm farming. There's another farmer out back, uh, Dave Perpera. And this is, a, he, he's got a, a business called Plato's Harvest. This is one of his helpers here, Stephanie, in the picture. This is a, a little setup they had a few years ago at the Plymouth Farmer's Market. Uh, Dave also rents land out there, and uh, he sells not only at the Plymouth Farmer's Market, but the Harvard Square Farmer's Market. And uh, Dave started renting land from Seoul Homestead probably about six years ago. And uh, he's just taken off in leaps and bounds. I can't say enough about his hard work and uh, 
his organizational skills. He's just become an uh, unbelievably accomplished farmer in a very short time. Uh, fields that aren't uh, used for uh, the sheep dogs or the sheep uh, or for the vegetable growing are, are cut for hay under contract with Rick Burnett of Plimpton and uh, he and his crew maintain the field perimeters and they put up the hay for sole homesteads animals. Uh, some of the fields are used for our sheep and goats. Uh, those are actually Rich's uh, sheep right there. I want to mention this woman right here, Kathy Heimerdinger, uh, Middleborough native. Uh, she and her sister Karen, uh, Karen Dusek, founded Seoul Homestead Education Center 22 years ago. Uh, Kathy's parents uh, both passed away and she moved back to the house uh, she grew up in on uh, uh, Thompson Street. So she, after living at Seoul Homestead for the last 21 years, has moved back down the street but she's still coming over every morning to do the animal chores as a volunteer. And you'll see uh, uh, the amount of time that she puts in when we get into the volunteer sheet. But uh, I can't say enough about Kathy. She is the heart and soul of uh, Seoul Homestead. Uh, we have a community garden area. Uh, we have about 12 plots that we rent to uh, organic gardeners for a nominal fee. Uh, Middleborough High School special needs uh, students have taken advantage of some of these plots to grow a pumpkin patch for many years, uh, and I hope that relationship can continue. Uh, moving on, uh, a couple other items on the farm plan. We have a compost area where residents can drop their, uh, their leaves in the fall uh, to go into our compost pile. The entire property is managed with organic management practices. Uh, one thing, the, the final item on this farm plan, I'm working with the NRCS, uh, National, Natural, Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is a branch of the USDA, to upgrade a stream crossing to the back field. Uh, to get to the back fields, we drive through a shallow stream and have, you know, uh, since Seoul Homestead took over the property, uh, which is detrimental to vehicle, vehicles and, uh, you know, doesn't do the stream much good either. Uh, the other alternative is coming in from the back access road to the property, which, uh, because I can't really ask, uh, you know, other people to wreck their vehicles, although I, I destroy mine by driving to the stream. Uh, I've allowed them to come in through the back, and what that does, it's created maybe a half mile uh, rutted dirt path through the hay field and it's destroyed a lot of hay. So one of the, the biggest recommendations uh, for, from the NRCS was to uh, fix the stream crossing, put some culverts in and uh, dry that up so we're not driving through the water and so we can reclaim that hay field and we don't have a rutted muddy uh, road going out to the back through the middle of the field. So uh, we're working with that. I finally got a, a, a engineered drawing and I'm going to be looking for some bids on that in uh, the very near future. Uh, the, the farm buildings are used for the traditional uses as uh, uh, the classroom and office and the main barn and lower level. The first floor of the barn is uh, animal stalls and tool storage, the hayloft for hay, obviously. We have a little building for the sheep. We have a little building for the poultry and a little building that is rented to Dave Purpura for equipment storage. Uh, in the back of the main barn. Um, last year, uh, in 2012, if we can skip to the next uh, group of pages, I, there's six pages of this, and most of it you've seen uh, when Seoul Homestead uh, applied to renew the lease last year. Uh, most of this information was in that package. I've updated it. On the fourth page, you'll see figures uh, that we spent on the project in 2012. Uh, is page four of six. And just, just uh, very briefly, uh, basically we added this handicap ramp and uh, finished the flooring and the decking and the railing here out front. We did the rough plumbing and the uh, rough electric uh, for the building. Uh, we spent about $48,000 on the project in 2012. And, uh, you know, at this point I'm looking for uh, some bids to continue work on the project. 
We have a, a very heavy duty electrical uh, underground service now coming, or well, not, not totally underground. The end of this trench over uh, where you see the blue tarps on the far side, there's a telephone pole there. And uh, we swap the wire that used to come to the other side of the barn and put in this underground trench to feed the new uh, 300 amp panel uh, on the end of the new addition here. Uh, so these are this, just a very basic uh, glimpse at a Seoul Homestead's operating budget. Uh, right now, or, or in 2012, the uh, budget was $112,600. I think for 2013, we're looking at $111,500, so pretty much the same uh, this year as it was last year. But you can see where the money comes from and where it goes uh, for Seoul Homestead. Uh, you know, our income is pretty balanced. We uh, had a hair more income last year than we did expenses, which is always good. Uh, but most of our income comes from our harvest fair and special events, uh, membership and donations of which we have, you'll see on the right side, uh, corporate sponsors provide about $5,000 of our uh, donations and you see the corporate sponsors listed there. To become a corporate sponsor, we ask for a minimum of a $500 a year annual donation, and uh, all these uh, uh, businesses, uh, you know, kick in that much. Uh, program fees, uh, whether it's workshops or, uh, you know, educational programs, bring in about 20%. Rent on the property, I rent the, the five acres that I have, uh, and, you know, have farmed for the last 17 years. I rent that from Seoul Homestead. Rich Siemens rents his property, their rental on the apartments uh, upstairs in the farmhouse and downstairs. And uh, about $5,000 comes from grants every year. On the expense side, obviously the lion's share of our expense is for uh, uh, payroll and uh, uh, payroll taxes and uh, uh, expenses of that nature. Again, that that's to pay three part-time employees, that $68,000 figure. Uh, then the next line, 12% of our expenses are donated to the har harvest fair, are dedicated to the harvest fair, special events. Uh, then we have just dribs and drabs of other things. Maintenance uh, last year was very minor. Insurance is about 6%. Uh, utilities, sanitation, about 8%. Office supplies, 5%. Uh, food for the animals, uh, workshop and program expense, minimal. So that's pretty much the uh, financial basics of Seoul Homestead in a nutshell. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Uh, move on. I'd like to introduce our uh, education director, Laurie Ammerman, to talk for a few minutes. I'll move through a few slides. Laurie's been with us now for about four years, and I can't say enough about uh, how she's picked this program up and uh, just developed it uh, far beyond anybody's expectations and uh, I'm very happy to be working with her and have her here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, <laughs> I, was th I was thinking you would stand at the podium, well, but go yeah. ahead. I thought I was going to be in charge of it. Clicking the slides. slides. It's all yours. Oh. Hi. <laughs> My name is Laurie Immerman, and as Frank mentioned, I have been running the education department for four years. Um, we see over 2,000 children. Actually, this year, um, this past year, it was about 3,200 children. That includes children that actually come to the farm, which was a little over 2,000, and probably about 1,200 that um, the farm actually goes to them in outreach programs. One of the biggest outreach programs we have is actually with the town of Middleborough. Last year, we saw every student from grade one to grade five in the Berkland and the Mary Kay Good School utilizing their outdoor classroom. Um, it was a great experience for us, and I know um, the children and staff really liked it. I am now known um, in the schools as the farm lady. So um, I think that's great. Um, we also do outreach pro pro 
programs to daycare centers um, that for transportation reasons cannot um, come to the farm. But our main objective is to get children to the farm and to get them outside in fresh air, in fresh air. Um, this is children actually running from the back stream that Frank mentioned up the hill, up into the farm um, land where all the farmers grow their vegetables. Um, we run the programs year round um, in all sorts of weather, rain, snow. Here children are using binoculars from a grant that we got from the um, Taunton River watershed. Um, so they're looking, we have bird feeders, um, kind of a captive audi audience of birds out in the front of the farm and the bird feeders that um, Kathy fills all the time. Um, she has different feeders with different types of seeds, so we do have a variety of birds that visit the farm. This is one of the nature trails in the back, heading back actually, um, from the back field um, to the farmhouse. There's a nice um, path through there. Um, this is one of the rocks um, sculptures one of the children made. Um, all the vacation programs are hands-on, interactive. There's a craft component. In here, they learned about Inuksuk um, rock statues. This is out in um, one of the two greenhouses that are on the farm, soon to be three. Um, we're there, this is December, actually, and they're planting seeds in the greenhouse. And as you can see on the right, we actually were able to grow, um, or can grow, um, cool crops in the greenhouse, lettuce, um, there's some parsley in the back. Carrots grow on the ground. It's um, amazing that, um, especially the elementary school children, when you ask them where their food comes from, um, my favorite answer is my grandmother's closet and McDonald's. Um, when they leave Seoul Homestead, they actually have learned that their food comes from the ground. Um, it comes from farms. And it takes a little bit um, of poking and prodding to get them from their grandmother's closet to the supermarket to the farm. And that's what we're all about, is letting people Young children, teenagers, even adults know that food comes from farms, and without farms, we would not have food. This is, besides food, we have farm animals that the children um, can come and visit. We are open um, free to the public Tuesday through Sunday, 9 to 5, and you can come and visit the animals. In this particular shot, um, we're on a vacation program and one of the sheep wandered over to be petted. We also have ducks, geese, chicken, and we have goats. In this slide here, um, one of the, um, we actually have a few um, special needs groups that come to the farm, and um, for them, it gives them the opportunity um, to be able to touch the animals and touch wool. They get a, um, we have a lot of sensory materials that really helps them um, understand the animals. Um, and you can see there she has a sheet that we kind of point to things and tell it, and then they, they can feel the animals too. Um, and some of them, I notice you all have iPads. They come with iPads too, the, the aids, and help them um, with the sounds. So um, does anybody have any questions for me? No, nope, I guess so. Okay. Is that it? Oh, yeah, oh, and I wanted to mention too that um, all the programs are uh, based uh, on the frameworks of Massachusetts, state frameworks, either in math, history, science, social science. It sounds like you've had another great year out there. And we I have. And I can't tell you what an asset this is to the town of Middleborough, especially the young people in the town of Middleborough to give them exposure to an environment, a farm environment like this. A lot of kids don't have that opportunity, and we provide it here in Middleborough through your efforts. So again, thank you very much for 
for another great year, and I'm, I'm sure everybody in town is looking forward to, to what you're going to be doing out there next year. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it back over to Frank to finish up. Okay, so Laurie mentioned, uh, you know, the last slide was about a very young uh, special needs group. We have uh, uh, adult special needs groups, too. A couple years ago, the uh, Hartwood Apprentice Group, seen here, uh, built a tool shed for us on the farm. And a lot of these people uh, have been through the Middleborough school systems and were coming to the pumpkin patch uh, uh, years prior to, uh, you know, when they uh, joined this group. Uh, we do a lot of craft workshops, 35 workshops in 2012, and just some beautiful uh, uh, crafts come out of those workshops. Uh, if you were, maybe you were tuned into the auction yesterday, Louise Paoella, towards the end of the afternoon, uh, Sunday, had a quilt, uh, and these are her quilts right here. But at the Rotary auction, uh, they auctioned off one of her quilts yesterday. Mary Guida Boney, she and her husband Donald used to own the farm. Donald and uh, Mary was a teacher at the Plymouth School Systems, and she teaches rug braiding for us now. And Donald milked 100, 120 cows every day before selling the farm to the town about 25 years ago. Uh, another adult workshop, Rick Murphy, a friend of ours, does oil painting, landscape painting, and he, uh, every year he, he does a landscape painting workshop for us. We have Sheep Day coming up this year. It's May 11th. Uh, it's one of our, our great events. Uh, you know, again, hands-on. The fellow there on the left uh, in the blue sweatshirt, that's Andy Rice. Uh, and uh, he comes from Brattleboro, Vermont. And he is uh, pretty much a celebrity in the sheep world. Uh, he probably knows every sheep farmer uh, in New England. Uh, he's so sought after for his shearing, not only shearing skills, but um, his entertainment and educational skills. He engages the kids and, uh, you know, gets right in there. Again, Laurie mentioned hands-on. We're all about hands-on. Of course, we're not going to let him shear any sheep, but, you know, he will get them in there to, uh, to help him, you know, hold the fleece. So he'll, uh, you know, explain what he's doing every step of the way. And like any artist that really knows their craft, he makes it look so easy. It's uh, just amazing to watch him. A big component at Soul Homestead is our folk music. We have our summer concert series, uh, Saturday nights in July and August. Uh, this year we have seven concerts scheduled. We, of course, our Harvest Fair and Joe Davies Folk Festival in, in September. Uh, you know, uh, we see over a thousand people every year come through the gates that weekend. Uh, Marla Isaacs here, who does owl prowls for us, New England Reptiles and Raptors, has a, a good group here at the Harvest Fair. Another shot of the Harvest Fair. We have Dale Perkins Horse Show every year, and that's the ring out in the back there that you see. Uh, and we have a nature trail. It's well used. Uh, uh, Eagle Scouts, I think Troop 64 Eagle Scouts, uh, put this signage together and keep the, the nature trail uh, maintained. And here's kids leaving it right now, heading back towards the farm. Again, uh, this, my presentation always gives me a chance to plug Sheep Day being this time of year. So I'm shamelessly promoting our May 11th event right here. So uh, that's about it. Uh, I would like to mention last year in 2012 on this uh, program summary sheet down towards the bottom, <clears throat> we, we, I was joking with uh, Rob DeRosiers, who was here earlier, that I wish I could clone a couple of me so we could uh, do some more things. And he'd, he'd say, yeah, one of me could go on vacation. But uh, we are very busy, as you can guess. Uh, in the middle of this uh, section titled also on the program summary, you'll see we participate in as many um, uh, community events as we possibly can, the Rotary uh, auction, obviously, and the, uh, the craft fair that's held here at Town Hall in July, the Lakeville Arts Fest, uh, the South Shore Celebration, which is at the Marshfield Fair. Sometimes we participate in the Marshfield Fair, and now Crazy Days is back with us again. So, you know, we try and, uh, you know, set up a table and uh, let people know where, who we are and what we do at these events. Uh, you know, we work with the library. Uh, and one thing Laurie's instituted uh, 
within the last year is that uh, we know, you know, if you have kids, a lot of families sometimes can't afford to go to uh, uh, some of these high price things. So Homestead always tries to keep our program fees and our, our uh, you know, event fees very low. But Laurie's actually instituted some free family events uh, a couple, three times a year uh, that's just open to the public and uh, at no charge, just to, to get people to come to the farm and enjoy the outdoors and see what we're all about. So, uh, the last sheet is the volunteer hours for 2012. Uh, if you just look at the totals, 4,888 hours is what it adds up to. That's like having uh, almost two and a half full-time staff people if you add the work that's done by volunteers. Seoul Homestead is a, a volunteer-driven organization. We couldn't do what we do without having so many people involved. And every aspect of our program involves volunteers. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough about all the people that help out and the dedication of our board of directors, a couple of whom are here with me tonight, Bob Nichols, uh, uh, our newest uh, board member, Janine McLaughlin, who was just voted on in the last two months. Thanks for coming, you guys. Uh, so that's pretty much my report for this year. Uh, thank you all for your support. And uh, if there's anything we can do, feel free to ask. And well, I think you're doing plenty for our community. I also want to thank the volunteers. I mean, almost 5,000 hours of volunteer help is, is just tremendous, and it shows what kind of community Middleborough really is. So, again, thank you for everything you do out there. I can't say it enough. It's a wonderful asset the town has, and you're doing a terrific job out there. I just hope it continues forever. Anybody else want to make some comments? This is for town. Uh, at the beginning of the process when the town took over the uh, farm, it was a significant amount of money in excess of a million dollars. There was a time period where the barn was questioned on whether or not it could be uh, saved. Uh, and to see the work that's been done over a numerous uh, number of years and uh, most recently under Frank's uh, direction and all the volunteers that have helped just to see the building that, uh, even though you're not done, the addition uh, which was talked about and I was like, how are they going to do it on the budget that they have? And to see it uh, coming to uh, fruition and the reality is just uh, great because there was that time period where people questioned whether or not the uh, farm was a good investment or, mm. or not. And I don't think that anybody would uh, uh, make that type of a question any longer. And it's uh, from all the work that you folks do and you should all be commended. If you had a, a Middleborough file, I'd be putting a letter of support in there. Just teasing these guys up front here, because they say we put a letter in, but it's an outstanding work that you folks do. Thank you as volunteers. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Mr. Spataro and Mr. Rulo have said. Um, you guys do a fantastic job. I love the uh, carrots come from the ground. I mean, my kids, I try to teach them as much as possible about that, but time and time again, people think milk comes from the supermarket. It's just not that way. Um, you have a candle making workshop coming up? Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, I think it's March 30th, uh, Tracy Marzelli. And I saw Tracy here earlier. Jane's here, of course, another board member. Uh, but a board member, Tracy Marzelli, is going to be doing a candle making workshop March 30th. Now, if you go to the website, you uh, click on our, our calendar of events or whatever, uh, you, you know, it's complete information. Again, another volunteer. Uh, webmaster uh, Michael Brother does a great job with the website, keeping everything up to date. And you have a um, you have a recycling day coming up too, don't you? Yeah, April 13th we'll have uh, uh, electronics and appliance recycling right here at the town hall parking lot uh, from 10 to 2. Uh, we we charge a minimal fee to recycle those things. Uh, you know, quite honestly, we try and keep it a little bit less than people would have to pay if they brought it to the dump to give them some incentive, you know, to uh, help us with our fundraising. And did I hear you say if it's got a plug, you can bring it down? Yeah, pretty much. If uh, anything with a plug, you know, we'll, we'll take it. We'll figure out, you know. But again, it's it's all nominal uh, charges. And your website is www.soulhomestead.org? Yeah, that's us. 
All right. Thanks again for everything. All right. Mr. Well, Chairman? Thank you. Mr. McKinn. On your website, is there one of those little magical buttons that somebody could electronically press to make a donation? Not yet, but we're working on it. We're working on that. Okay. But would ha be happy to accept You'll check. take it by check? <laughs> Small and mock bills, yeah, any of that yeah. kind of thing? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming. You all set? Just let them clean up the moment and then we'll get started with the next item. We have two hours a day. Probably why I was in the corner, huh? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes you wonder. <laughs> We're going to get started here in a minute. We're just setting up... Uh, Necessary material for this uh, next discussion. Okay, looks like we're just about ready. The next item on the agenda is a presentation by Environmental Partners Group Inc. Uh, we the annual uh, town meeting warrant article number 15. Uh, Environmental Partners Group Inc. is uh, project manager for the uh, uh, new uh, improved uh, wastewater treatment plant. Thank you, sir. How are you doing? How are you? <laughs> Fine, thanks. You can just move that just mic. Move the you mic over there and, uh, Let me just read Article 15 so we all know what this is about. Article 15 uh, says to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer some money from taxation, free cash, other specific available fund, the stabilization fund, any existing appropriation or account, or other available source or by buying for all relevant and necessary expenses associated with the design of the upgrade to the wastewater treatment facility for the wastewater department or act anything on. Our next permit for the wastewater treatment plant is coming up soon. 
and the requirements have changed. So more stringent requirement on the level of nitrogen uh, and phosphates that we um, put back into the Namaskat River. Uh, so, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Millis, M-I-L-L-E-T-T -T for Environmental Partners. Um, about a month ago, we had a briefing session over in Charlie's office to go over this project. The handout that I've given you summarizes what we spoke about uh, a month ago and we'll deal with what we're going to handle tonight. Um, as you mentioned, this project is driven by a pending EPA permit. The uh, discharges from wastewater treatment plants are governed by what's called the NIPDES NPDES permit, which governs uh, the degree of quality a wastewater treatment plant must achieve to produce an effluent. In short, the new NIPTES permits are going to be heavily regulated on nitrogen and phosphorus, which can act as fertilizers in rivers and streams and cause algal blooms and fish kills and other um, uh, negative environmental impacts. Um, what this means to Middleborough is the current plant meets its current permit, but the old permit is five years old and then some. Um, as I mentioned a month ago, the EPA has been uh, talking about revising the NIPTES permits for over five years. Um, very slow process. They've been dealing with most of the bigger plants in the Commonwealth first and then dealing with, with the smaller communities. Um, a month ago when we, we met across the hallway, we weren't sure when the EPA was going to get to Middleborough. Uh, by coincidence, and we certainly didn't contact them because that was part of our strategy, um, they are coming to town on Thursday. We are having a meeting at the treatment plant on Thursday morning with Charlie, Todd, and myself, EPA, and DEP to talk about the permit status. Um, at that time, we will have more information on what the real nitrogen and phosphorus levels are for the, the new permit. Um, our role as the owner's project manager is to basically to uh, defend your interests on the job. We have issued a request for proposals for ed an engineering company or firms to design the upgrades to the plant that RFQ is, um, was on the street last month. We received four responses last week, and this week we're going to be interviewing the four firms who submitted proposals for the project. It's a qualifications-based selection, and after we choose a firm in the next couple of weeks, we will then negotiate a contract. Um, the general schedule is once a, fir an, a firm is on board by July 1st, pending town meeting approval, if it's successful, the design would start. Um, let me just briefly run through what we are doing at the plant, and then if you have any questions, I'd be, I'd be happy to um, stop and talk to them. I'm going to briefly describe just the process, not get too bogged down in engineering or wastewater treatment details but more importantly, talk about the schedule and the cost and what we can do to manage costs. Um, the existing plant is, um, was built in the uh, late 70s. It's a classical wastewater treatment plant. It works very well, d despite its lack of automation and lack of uh, co computer controls. It actually is a very robust plant. It's like a big old Ford Crown Victoria. It runs very well, not very efficient, but it, it meets its current effluent uh, requirements. There's a lot of unused space in the plant. Um, Quite the best. Photographs are in, are in your handout. The existing plant in here has a very large unused uh, aeration basin. There are four long re rectangular basins of which one is used right now. Uh, the plant was designed for a lot more flow than the plant currently sees, which actually is a good thing. We were able to come up with a plan where, whereby we can reuse a lot of the space in the aeration basins and convert the space and give us better processes to remove nitrogen and, and phosphorus. Our goal is to uh, provide Todd and the staff with brand new mechanical equipment. All of the uh, rotating equipment, the aerators, the uh, clarifiers, the pumps are at least 30 years old. They're past their useful life and spare parts are almost impossible to come by. Um, <clears throat> Todd can tell you some stories about the recent problems with the uh, solids dewatering device to uh, compress the sludge. Uh, that was down about a month ago and took several weeks to find spare parts. So the, the equipment is old, it served the town very well, and despite the best efforts to maintain it in good condition, it is, quite frankly, at the end of its useful life. Our plan is to keep the existing shell of the aeration basins and convert them into what's called a uh, five-stage um, barden full process. A barden full process, briefly, is a name for a process to remove nitrogen and phosphorus um, sequentially. On the bottom, the Barden Foe was named after an uh, engineer called James Barnard. He took the first three letters of his name, B-A-R. He, he wasn't an Irish guy, but he was a South African guy. It's Bar, B-A-R for Barnard, denitrification, de and P-O for phosphorus. So Barden Foe is a way to remove nitrogen and phosphorus using this process. It's been around since the 80s. It's used all over the world. It's a reliable process, and it will re reduce our nitrogen and phosphorus to below what the new permit might be. 
The current plants nitrogen is in the 20s, 25, 26, 27 parts per million. The new permit will either be 8, 5, or 3. So the nitrogen levels leaving the plant are way beyond uh, what the new permit will be. The phosphorus levels of the plant are just above what the new permit might be. They're about 0 0.15, 0 0.2. The new permit will be, about, we, we think, about 0 0.1. Um, I guess one other, one other way to, to look at the improvements are if the EPA didn't even exist here, there would be sig significant improvements needed at the plant to replace all the equipment. Uh, it's either rusted out or it's unfixable or um, past its useful life. There's at least 10 to $15 million worth of improvements just to get the plant back to its existing shape not even including the improvements to get it to the better shape to give you better nitrogen and phosphorus uh, removal. For example, electrically, the uh, systems are, are old. The insulation is broken down on some of the conductors. There's at least $2 million worth of electrical improvements needed at the plant. On the control system, um, a plant uses a lot of um, oxygen and dissolved oxygen sensors to control blowers and mixers. <clears throat> There's at least half a million dollars needed to upgrade or install dissolved oxygen monitors, probes, and sensors. Um, so our plan is to reuse the existing plant, convert the old basins into a uh, barden full process, uh, reuse the old clarifiers. The clarifiers are basically big circular tanks, and I certainly would encourage you guys to come out and look at the plant. It's not a very attractive tour, but it's an important to have a flavor for what a sewage plant is all about. Um, by being able to, to use the old shells, the old concrete in the tanks, we're able to save a lot of money. A new plant, by comparison, would be uh, 35 to $50 million in that range. So our price is about one-third less than the cost of a new plant. Um, the new plant will be more efficient than the old plant. We've been talking to the uh, electric department. They've been out there to do an energy audit. The plan is to obviously make the new plant as energy efficient as possible with high efficiency motors. Um, the existing plant motors are just turned on that they run full speed. They do a good job, but we're, there's a lot of energy wasted, not because the operators do a poor job, just because by virtue of the old technology. For example, the, the, the new mixers and blowers will have adjustable speed controls to be able to adjust their level of power consumption based on the amount of uh, wastewater coming into the plant. Um, other parts of the process, we're going to be putting in um, you know, uh, a ultraviolet disinfection system. We're going to be putting in new windows, doors, and a new roof on three of the buildings. I'd say basic bread and butter improvements. It's not a very uh, lavish um, expansion. Most of the money is in mechanical equipment electrical equipment, control devices, and uh, equipment that you need to produce better wastewater. Um, the, the, our plan right now is to go for, is to, once we have a designer on board, and um, part of our design, uh, our, the RFQ that we wrote for design is based on our report, which says we have a maximum amount of money of $27 million, including contingency for this project. So the designer who we, we choose in the next couple of weeks in their contract, there is a cost limit saying this job cannot cost any more than $27 million, including contingency. And that's, so that's upfront in the design contract. We're not the designer. We're the owner's project manager. Our job is to make sure that the designer stays on schedule, does a good job, doesn't over-design it. Uh, we will be involved with uh, construction oversight and have our man in the field for a couple of years. That, that's the duration of the project. Um, that's really the essence of, of my uh, presentation. We are, there is no emergency generator out there right now. For example, there is a small generator, but it's grossly undersized. So if, when the power goes out, like it's happened several times in the past few months, the plant is uh, basically cooked. Thankfully, the existing tanks have enough capacity to store sewage as it comes in until the power comes back on and Todd's been able to kind of nurse the plant back to full health again. We will be putting in a real full-size 400 kW generator to be able to f provide full backup power in the event of a power outage. Um, so th the key to our approach is to reuse as much space as we can, reuse the old concrete tankage, uh, do some modest improvements to windows, doors, and roofs, and to uh, make sure the d designer is working within a very fixed budget. The approximate schedule is it'll take about a year to do the design once somebody starts on July 1st, if the article is approved at town meeting. Probably two years of construction. Uh, the phasing will be, will be tricky as we turn off tank one, then turn on tank two, turn off tank three, turn on tank four, because we're working around a live wastewater plant. Will this That's new, about it. Will this new retrofit be, uh, would, will this increase the capacity of the plant, or is the plant capacity going to stay relatively the same? It's going to stay the same. The plant right now treats on average about a little over one million gallons a day if you average it out over the whole year. It's currently seeing in the springtime two and a half, three. Two and a half, three, four million gallons in the springtime, which is typical of 
New England plants, that you get a lot of rain and you get a lot of leaky pipes giving you wastewater that, that shouldn't be in your pipes. But on an average year basis, it's, it's a little over 1 million gallons. The current permit from the EPA is for 2.1 million gallons, so we'll, okay. we believe we'll, have, we'll still have re reserve capacity in the plant for expansion if the sewer system is expanded. But at this time, we're not looking for a major expansion. And this article will be asking for 27 million? Is that the No, problem? it's just for the design. Oh, just for the design yeah. phase. And how much will that be? Uh, given the fact that we're about to negotiate or review four proposals and choose a firm and then negotiate a fee, I'd rather not give a number because once I give out a number, these four firm X is going to know what our target number is, to be quite candid with you. We're going to need a number for yeah. April 20th. You'll have a number in the next two or three weeks. Okay. Um, as a percentage, I could say design fees range between 7 and 12 percent of, of a project as a planning level number, but we want to negotiate that with the chosen design firm. Mr. Chair? Any other questions? Mr. McKinnon. Sir, uh, I saw your present. I was in the room for your presentation the other night, and one of the topics discussed was uh, test borings of the tanks to make sure that the walls were what they were supposed to, or what they were stated as. Has right. that been accomplished? No, we haven't. In the past month, between the rain and snow and ice and everything else, we have not done any more work out there. We, before May, we will be doing more uh, test cores in the walls to make sure the concrete is in durable condition. The past month has been, month has been uh, difficult. The empty tanks were all holding on the wall. I couldn't hear you. Could you come up here, John? Thank you. Due to the recent rain and snow melt, all those empty tanks that they were going to do the borings on are full. Probably going to take a, at least a month and a half before we get all those empty again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Patel. Uh, we've had the presentation, but there may be people that are not fully uh, understanding what we're doing. Like Twenty-seven million dollars. When we originally talked about it, it was thirty to potentially forty million, maybe forty-five million. Um, Charlie, might you uh, just uh, uh, give a, a brief couple of uh, sentences or a couple of minutes on uh, the challenge that we have on wastewater? We have a you know, the limited population that uses the, the surge, that we don't have a large uh, reserve because we've been keeping the rates down. So this is basically uh, $27 million coming from a starting point of zero. So the idea of keeping the expenses down and how creative the uh, project managers have been to try to come up with uh, something that uh, didn't uh, approach the uh, high side of the range that we had. No, yeah, absolutely, and uh, that's, that's been a focus, you know, from day one is to continue to um, you know, put pressure on the, on the total cost and, and, and to do this for as, uh, uh, as low a price as we can. Uh, and that'll be part of the discussions we have with all the designers uh, this week is, uh, you know, what are your ideas for, you know, uh, not only keeping this uh, cost within budget, but, but bringing it down even further. Um, because we'd like to do this, you know, as, as cost efficiently as possible. Um, and, and that's been, you know, something we've talked about, you know, in hiring environmental partners, uh, you know, to do this. And uh, we'll be continuing to, you know, we've got two um, separate um, sessions of... Um, uh, value engineering. Value engineering, thank you. Uh, to focus particularly on cost and, and to, to, to work on, you know, once the design progresses, you know, finding, you know, in, uh, cheaper ways of doing things. So while everybody's seen their uh, bills go up, you know, uh, uh, clearly the management of uh, town manager and our uh, uh, superintendent and our uh, uh, wastewater treatment uh, director uh, all understanding that we're trying to do as much as we can for as little as possible and yet leave the design open so that if we do see the growth, uh, there's the opportunity to expansion, and nobody's saying, well, we didn't build in Correct. the opportunity to, uh, to expand if we needed to. So I think this is a tremendous effort, um, and it was uh, shown in the uh, uh, few hours that we had as the workshop uh, of uh, an effort to try to get something done basically for half of what the high side of the range might be. Yeah, I mean, it, re it really was, you know, when, we, uh, when the people uh, built and paid for this plant in the 70s, they... Um, they built a very, you know, robust plant, as uh, as Paul said. It's, it's you know got a lot of capacity there, and 
And by making that investment a long time ago, uh, it, it's going to save us money now going forward because we have that capacity to use. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, I think uh, one of the topics that was discussed the other night in the meeting was also the uh, savings that would come from the spending a lot of money but putting it into a plant to make it more energy efficient. Yes. And also this chemistry that you're doing different so you wouldn't have to buy some of the chemicals that they have to buy now? Yes, on the energy front, we are have, doing the energy audit with the electric and gas department. Right. The plan is to say the current bill is you know, X, the new bill will be X minus 20% or whatever the number will be. On the chemical standpoint, if by not using for final disinfection of the effluent, the plant currently uses uh, bleach followed by um, bisulfide to counteract the bleach. By using ultraviolet light, we can get rid of two chemicals. We can kill the bugs, if you will, and get, get rid of two liquid chemicals. So we are, there should be some operating cost savings by using better uh, processes to better achieve processes. the same function. Okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, you had a question? Yeah, I, my name is Brian Givanoni. I, I had a comment. I like the fact that uh, one of the requirements was to hire an engineer to really watch out for the town's best interest because I know when the first comments were made a few years back talking about this plant was, all the engineers are designing it up to get their fee up. Well, with this process, the way it's set up now, environmental partners who can't bid on the design because there are there are engineers watching out for our pocketbook is going to keep this process down, like like uh, Selectman Spataro said, and uh, that you know half of the high side, which thank God because that high side was uh, um, was uh, was choking a lot of people, but um, but we're already at a max number here where we we're going to do some value engineering and. I wouldn't doubt to see maybe some of the other engineers come up with some slick ideas that might even shave a little bit more off of it. So that's a, that's a positive for our community, and I'm thankful that Environmental Partners is on board with us. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chair. Mr. Frawley. Uh, through you to Charlie. And we're still exploring, obviously, the low interest door. Yeah, yeah we, we, we have a meeting this, interest loan. Yeah, this week we have a meeting with uh, DEP in their offices to, to talk about that. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. We'll be supporting this article. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for coming this evening. And, and just a reminder, we are working on having a um, site visit to the, to the plant on Saturday, April. Okay. I, I, I think we looked at the. Yeah. Um, the sixth, so I think I April think in the morning, what? April sixth, uh, in the 6th. morning, okay. uh, so people can come and you know you kick the tires, swimming. so to speak. April 6th and go, go swimming in the pool. Plant. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't recommend bringing your uh, bathing suit, but uh, <laughs> and I don't know about getting a flavor for the pool either. That's yeah. not one of my. Oh, so we'll, we'll we'll get you more information on that uh, as we, we work on that. All right, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda uh, is uh, it's time for the town manager's annual performance review. Yeah. Um, so uh, with that, I think what we'll do is um, I'll give a general overall review of our town manager for the past year. And this, this overall review is based, every selectman did a review. Uh, and I just merely summarized them and came up with averages. Uh, just so that everybody knows, there's about five or six categories, and I'll go through, let's see, two, four, there's five categories that we rate them on. The scale is one to three, three being the best score, one being the worst score. Um, well, Charlie, you had another great year, according to the Board of Selectmen. Um, on average, uh, Averaging all the scores through all the categories, you got a 2.7 out of 3. Um, so it's another strong year. Uh, most members had uh, very favorable comments uh, regarding your performance the past year. But, but no one's perfect, so, so there are a few, uh, few areas uh, that uh, the board felt that you could work on. Um, uh, board communications, uh, you had a 2.8. Um, 
and um, this is effective communication with the board, availability to the board, uh, responsiveness to uh, suggestions, plans and organizers, presents in a clear and concise and comprehensive manner, uh, all of those. Um, the strengths were um, that you've developed a strong and open line of communication with the school department. Uh, that started a couple years ago, and it continues, and it's very important for the town and the school to be on the same page and to understand what the town and what the school is trying to accomplish, and having a good relationship with the uh, superintendent goes a long way to getting us there. You've done that, and the board recognizes that. Um, you build a consensus amongst board members, but also you respect each member's perspective. So. You try to build a cons consensus, but you'll listen. Uh, and, and, and not all, there are times when the five of us don't agree. Um, that happened tonight, but, but we move on. You know? So again, uh, you, you scored very highly there. Um, again, some of the weaknesses that, they, um, that the board had mentioned was uh, the quality sometimes of the maps are uh, not of the highest quality. We have the ability to, to generate higher quality, so when we have the need to have those maps, that maybe we could uh, use the uh, GIS system to do that. Um, and um, sometimes the follow through on some of the short term objectives fell short. Uh, the IT function, electronic timing, fell behind our original schedule, but it's on track now. Um, and you get it back there. So we may have some slips and, and falling behind short term, but we always manage to stay on track and we'll get it done. Uh, community relations, you got a 2.7. Uh, uh, this category talks about, again, effectively communicates with the board policy to the public, uh, works with the news media to get that communication out, um, responsive to citizens' complaints, um, general attitude of the community to the manager is, is positive. So the, the, the only weakness that was pointed out here is needs to use media more effectively to communi communicate to a larger portion of our citizens. So that was someone's, uh, one of the comments on the board is a weakness. Uh, uh, it's a way of getting the word out in a much, to maybe a larger audience than just communicating here at our board meetings. Mr. Chairman? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow I just had a, just a question on the, your comment. Sure. Um, when we say uh, weakness on, on a 2.8 on a 3 scale, what? Uh, yeah, what's well, probably areas of improvement? That, that's fine. I'm just going with what was on the uh, okay. the sheet itself. They okay. called them weaknesses so and strengths. Like the okay. scale was 1 to 3 yeah. as opposed to 1 to 5. <laughs> you didn't bring that up again? <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> Uh, but again, he rated very high. In, uh, leadership ability, uh, uh, 2.5. Um, uh, again, the strengths was, uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, some of the board members felt that you were a little slow in reacting to, uh, to personnel issues in town, and, and others felt that uh, you acted timely on that issue. So I guess there's a mixed feeling on, on that particular issue. <laughs> Uh, displays strong leadership skills in contract negotiations, um, and, and the, you know, the, the, the example cited here was the Edgeway Agreement, um, the Rotary discussions, uh, and legal issues related to Tispa Quinn. Very rarely does the board get surprised on any issue. Managerial effectiveness, again, very high, 2.8. Um, Again, uh, very strong marks on the financial issues uh, that you do. A, uh, you, you're really strong in, in recognizing and managing of financial issues in town. So uh, you get a good, good grade there. Um, managerial effectiveness, 2.8. Uh, and the last one was personal and professional traits, uh, 2.9. Um, just uh, Again, outstanding job. There are a couple of issues uh, that were mentioned here. Again, dealing with uh, personnel issues and the ability to react timely to when those issues pop up. But in general, um, another great review. Uh, I want to thank you.
uh, for your work for the town of Middleborough. Again, like I said, uh, great job on the board, appreciate it. With that, I'll turn it over to individual selectmen to make any comments they feel necessary. Mr. McKinnon, do you have any anything you'd like to add? Why, yes. Why, I think why I would. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. Go I ahead. did rate you down a little bit on my, and I hate this. This is a, this is a, this is my what, fourth time we've done this. And doing a review for, for an employee, if you would, in public is about the worst you thing can, you can imagine. I did, I will do it because we're supposed to. Um, I did rate you down as, uh, as far as your interaction and response to some of the, your managers. I think that you could be more, con I guess controlling may not be the right word, but I think some of the managers have more free range abilities than they may be have warranted. Maybe they need to be reeled in a little bit. So that would be the place where I would recommend that you change. But I, as far as negotiations with the unions go, I think that's been going great. Uh, so I'd like to see you reel some of your managers in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Anyone else? Mr. Spataro. Uh, I understand what Steve's saying. Uh, I did not have the same uh, uh, concern. I, you know, my managers are unionized, and uh, so I think, uh, at least for me personally, uh, how you might do it in the uh, private sector without uh, uh, a union to deal with versus uh, a union situation, I felt uh, uh, might have been that. Uh, uh, that Steve's talking about, so I, I felt uh, confident that uh, within the parameters of the things that I would have to deal with in dealing with personnel issues. Because everybody in, seems like in public government is fast to sue if they think they're not getting uh, their fair share, and yet I, uh, I uh, observed uh, Charlie managing uh, si uh, uh, situations uh, that probably weren't seen by the public. Uh, in an expedited fashion uh, with minimum negative influence on the town, either financially or uh, as the operations ran. So uh, again, I, I think one of the things that Charlie did very well is we have, there's five of us. We don't always agree. Um, we have our best interest at heart, yet we all have other jobs that we're doing. So sometimes uh, we think that we have the answer. Calling myself included, I'm not blaming anybody but myself. And uh, uh, not being in the, here full time, that there'd be items in the decision process that I didn't fully understand, which I had to educate us on, because it'd be possible to make a decision that sounded good uh, based on our uh, part time involvement uh, on behalf of the town, which uh, in fact was uh, not the way to go. And so, uh, um, Charlie didn't make fast decisions. He didn't try to shove it down our throat. He provided us with additional information so that uh, more times than not, we came to the same conclusion he did because we had all the data points. And that wasn't always the case uh, uh, in, in different environments. Uh, and again, the fact that we go to town meeting with the full support of the finance committee, and there's none of uh, the, this is our budget, that's their budget. Uh, it is, uh, doesn't seem to be any adversarial uh, departments that, uh, are off doing their own thing. And uh, Charlie was as active as anybody else, bringing the GE to the forefront of our attention uh, for the uh, uh, town and the citizens to take action uh, before uh, some of the expenses that we potentially could have incurred at the GE uh, 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 took place. So, again, uh, we've often had uh, managers, underneath the town manager, come forward with. Uh, uh, well, I don't like what I'm getting from the budget. You know, I need this, I need that. Everybody in the uh, last budgeting process was very respectful of the situation uh, that we were in uh, financially. And while they wanted more, they understood when they, it was clear that they weren't going to get it. And uh, Charlie kept everybody from breaking rank, uh, uh, which uh, could happen when different boards are negotiating contracts. 
So he was able to line up everybody to be able to do that. And I think that's Yeoman's work. And it's not just financial, uh, which he's good at uh, numbers, but it's also people management of all the uh, people were coming to Charlie for guidance and to make sure that everything lined up in situations where there was no formal reason to do that. And for that, I thought that was outstanding. Thank you. Mr. Frawley? Sure. Um, I can certainly understand where Mr. McKinnon is coming from. I'd like to see it be a little bit firmer in some situations with personnel. But uh, I think overall, you, you, as far as I'm concerned, you're doing a great job. Um, and this is going to sound odd, but like I appreciated the phone call on Saturday to give me the heads up, up, heads up about what was going on. I know that you're working on Saturday when you, that wasn't, I wouldn't call that an emergency. But it, I certainly appreciated the heads up so I could get in front of the situation. And it, it, it did save us, I think, you know, a lot of grief. Well, it prevented a, some headaches that we could have uh, we could run into. So those are the types of things that uh, that stick out for me. And I said this before, and, and I'll say it every time. When I randomly show up at a at a committee meeting, and you're not supposed to be there, and you're there, that speaks volumes for me. Um, I can't say enough about your job performance when you know. I go to a school committee meeting, and for no other reason other than you know it's a good place for you to be at that time, even though it's 7 o'clock at night on a Thursday night, and you've been here all day anyway. That really means a lot to me, and it, to be quite honest with you, it really means a lot to the people who are paying attention to these things, too. Um, the townsfolk appreciate your dedication when they see you. And I've heard them say, go home now. <laughs> so uh, I really... I. I appreciate it, and I know the townspeople who are paying attention appreciate it too. So thank you, Mr. Quack. Well, um, I don't think anybody can argue that you uh, have a very unique profession and what you're required to do. Um, most importantly, you've managed to continue to operate this town within a budget, a balanced budget, and I think that is always going to be at the forefront for me and most people. And it hasn't been easy for you to do, as we saw tonight. Um, as far as you know, some of the department heads and concerns, uh, I, I understand you can't just go charging in there like we see in the private sector and take the bull by the horns. There is a union involved, and there's a processes in place that need to be dealt with in order for you to uh, try to get involved in some of those things. And I think you've done that. You've handled it very well. I was very excited to see how things came out with with the union contracts. Not very easy, and those things can can go sideways on you real quick. And, and I think that you have a really, really strong relationship with the union heads. And I think that your communication with them is very positive and always moving forward. Um, I know that we've had some distractions, as I call them, you know, when it comes to uh, issues with court. Uh, we talk about these things in the executive session. And I know that a lot of these things would just be avoidable. But unfortunately, these things do wind up in court. And I think that uh, you've done a very good job of working with town manager excuse me, with uh, town council to ensure that we're really picking and choosing um, things that we should get involved in in a legal standpoint to make sure that our legal costs are kept at a low roar. And I know that we've done that. I mean, these are, these are court cases that the town should have gone to court on, that it was the right thing to do. Um, so o overall, it's been a, uh, uh, I think, a very positive year for us. Uh, moving forward, we're going to have a lot of new challenges. Um, but I think that you've always... Uh, you know, stayed out of the, 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 you know, I know that we've had some things come up that um, can get kind of ugly, but you don't get caught up in it, and I'm glad you don't. Um, and I'm, uh, I just think that you, you know when to step in, like, you know, tonight with the letter and stuff. But yeah, I understand you're in a tough situation there. You're, you're responsible for sort of greasing the wheels of Beacon Hill and making sure that they, you maintain a real smooth line of communication with our legislators. Um, and I think you're doing a fabulous job of that. So I don't want you to think that I'm not uh, that I don't notice that. Um, so I'd just say continue with, with doing with what you're doing. I've been very very happy, uh, and I think that we're just uh, in a very very uh, unique situation in a positive way to have you as our town manager. I sure hope you're not planning on going anywhere. Thank you very much. Great, Mr. Chairman. 
Mrs. Patero. Just one other comment. Uh, we've seen in the paper of uh, towns around us where the town manager and the board of selectmen are at large. Um, and uh, uh, Charlie's uh, done a good job of following our lead. Uh, sometimes we follow his, sometimes he follows us. And if we dig our heels in on something with, that we absolutely disagree with him on, uh, we still take a vote. Whatever the decision is, Charlie executes on it. We don't get what we often refer to as the Heisman. You know, yeah, I'm gonna do that. You know, or the nod. Yes, I'm gonna do that and everybody, you know, I'll tell you yes, but I'll do no. Mm -hmm. you know, we have not found that, uh, uh, haven't had that the whole time that Charlie's been here. So I think that uh, while he, he's uh, proved to be a strong town manager, he respects the organization structure of uh, town meeting and town government. And uh, when the people have uh, voted through uh, us as their representatives and make a decision, he implements. I mean, clearly he uh, enlightens us if, uh, during the decision uh, making process if there's some subtle things that we don't fully understand. But once a decision is made, we, we've never had to really go back and do the decision uh, uh, again to satisfy him. He, uh, he understands the decision and he implements. So it's been uh, pretty smooth that way. We haven't wasted a lot of cycles on uh, uh, revisiting things because of uh, uh, disagreement. Thank you. Well, thank you for all the comments. Um, I think Mr. McKenna mentioned this. I've never, four years now I've done this. Um, it's the first time I've ever had to once I was on this board of selectmen to give a public evaluation of an employee's performance. Uh, it's difficult for those giving the evaluation and it's difficult for the individual receiving it. Uh, I don't particularly like the process. I understand why it has to be done, but it's not very, it's, it just makes everybody feel uncomfortable, I think. But, when, when you have a, an individual like uh, Mr. Costello who performs the way he does, it makes this a lot easier. Uh, and certainly you've made my job here for the past four years a lot easier, and I, and I truly appreciate it. I've enjoyed working with you. Uh, you're a true professional, um, and you've done the town well. Um, you've really done wonderful things for this town, and we all appreciate it, not only this board, but the citizens of Middleborough. So stay here for a long time, Charlie. We need you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I just might, uh, uh, and I, you know, um, always getting feedback is helpful, um, and you know, there's always room for improvement. Uh, and I, I hear your comments, and I will take them to heart and, and, and learn from them. Uh, uh, I've enjoyed working for this board. Uh, you, you've been, uh, you know. Uh, a pleasure to work with uh, because you know we we can have disagreements and we the next day we can go on and work on something else together and and, and nothing gets carried over uh, you know it's been a very you know positive experience for me and uh, and you know I I, I I thank you for all your um, positive comments as well I uh, but I'll also you know um, uh, pass some of that off to uh, our our staff and our department heads who have been uh, also very supportive and you know uh, very uh, helpful in this to me uh, doing what you want me to do. So uh, uh, again, I uh, enjoy working with you, and, and I hopefully this uh, uh, will continue for quite some time. Thank you. Uh, with that, we're gonna, I'm not going to allow any public comment on this item. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to uh, move on to the town manager's report. Just um, we had one item, uh, a carryover, which I had uh, forgotten about, but. Uh, uh, there was a question about where we stood with Auburn Street and, uh, and the Tracy matter, and uh, uh, the deadline there is uh, April 15th. I did happen to take a ride up to Auburn Street uh, <laughs> last week just to see my, for myself how things were progressing, and uh, there's even more junk and, and debris out there than there ever was before. Uh, unfortunately, I, I saw a couple of vehicles that looked like they were being offloaded to be disassembled, and so it, it, it appears pretty clear that, that not a lot is uh, going uh, on up there. So uh, come April 15th, we'll make sure we go up there and, uh, you know, take our, you know, assessment of it and report back to the court and, and, and pursue it further. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Uh, last item is correspondence. We'll start with Mr. Frawley this evening. 
think I'm good. You all set? Oh, actually, just on the oh, one thing. Oh, I just wanted to, to mention the uh, the Habitat for, for Humanity for Greater Plymouth, their annual gala, art, wine, and cheese, or jazz, I'm sorry. Friday, May 3rd at Pine Hills Golf Club, 7.30 to 11. Tickets $50, $35 before April 1st. And they're, they're available at www.hfhplymouth.org. Habitat for Humanity, Plymouth.org. And there's a number here, too, if anybody wants more information, they can get in touch with me, and I'll forward the info on to them. But that's Thank a great, great program. Thank you. Mr. Quell. Uh, just, Charlie, any, any, change, uh, any updates or changes to that, uh, well, to notice a project change from the landfill? Anything that different than what's been discussed? No, no, uh, they're just, you know, this, these are the regulatory things that they're going through uh, to, you know, put everything into place to, you know, redesign and, uh, you know, implement the agreement that we have with them. Okay. Well, one thing related to that, um, you know, is we'll, we will be having a, a household hazardous waste collection day on uh, June 22nd. It's a little far off, so we'll, um, you know, we'll remind people again uh, as we get closer to that, but uh, just if, in case people have been holding on to things that they, they want to get rid of, there will be a, a day where they can do that right here in Middleborough. Great, thank you. All right. Mr. McKinnon? Yes, well, I was going to mention that, but now that you've already taken the wind out of my sorry, sails, sorry thank you that. very much. Um, are we, can we put the, um, the list of items on the website? Yeah, this is already on the website. Oh, it is. Yeah, the, the, both, uh, both pieces are on the website. Well, that's all I had, so I'm going all to All set? Yeah. Mr. Spicato. All set. Chair is all set. Uh, with that, <coughs> I'll want to take a motion to adjourn. Motion to we'll adjourn. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you for coming this evening.